my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be showing you how to play a game that is currently on Kickstarter called The Castles of Mad King Ludwig 2nd Edition. This game is designed by Ted Elsback and published by Bezier Games, who are helping sponsor this tutorial. Castles of Mad King Ludwig is a game that originally came out back in 2014 and now is back on Kickstarter for a second edition. Yes. And uh, if you've never played this game before, in this game, we're basically trying to build out our own individual castles that's complete with different styles of rooms and uh, just try to score the most amount of points by the end of the game. Mm -hmm. Now, before we begin, we do have to mention that this is a prototype copy of the game, so things are subject to change in the future. If you are interested in the campaign, it's set to run for the entire month of November, and you can always check out the link, which is listed down below. And lastly, if you do like these videos and you want to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we are ready to begin. Mm -hmm. So if you'd please direct your attention to the center of the table, we're all set up here for a two-player game yep. of the Castles of Mad King Ludwig. We are. Welcome to the auction floor. Yes, we are in Bavaria. Yes. We're going to build some castles. <laughs> And if we didn't mention it before, this is partially an auction game. Mm -hmm. And so just to kind of give you the lay of the land, in the middle here we have the main board that serves as our scoreboard, but also houses all of the different types of room tiles that we're going to be auctioning off and adding to our castles. Mm -hmm. It also holds both the room deck as well as the bonus cards and the king's favor tokens, which are going to serve as end game scoring conditions. Each player starts the game with 15,000 worth in coins, as well as two bonus cards. So you actually start with three of them mm -hmm. and you choose two and discard your third. Yep. Now, the way that the game works is each round, one player is going to be the master builder. And so today, Naveen is going to start as our master builder, yeah, which yeah. is why he starts the game with zero points, whereas I start with one point. Yep. And as the master builder, Naveen will be responsible for pricing out these different room tiles. Yep. Now, at the start of each round, we actually start by adding room tiles to the auction floor. But because this is the first round of the game, we've already done that during setup, mm -hmm. which means we move straight into pricing these rooms. Mm -hmm. So now, as the master builder, Naveen will get to assign each room to a different uh, price amount underneath the board here, just like that. Yep. And this will determine how much players will need to pay in order to purchase those specific rooms. Now, because this is a two-player game, we're only going to price out five tiles. If it was a three-player or four-player game, we'd add these two slots here. Right. So it's going to be kind of expensive for us to start. I'm going to price it like this. Oh, yes. interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, the prices listed here are for all players, including myself. So when I'm pricing this out, I have to be kind of cautious as to not pay too much for certain things. Right, because after the Master Builder finishes pricing these, then we move into the next step, where starting with the player to the left of the Master Builder, mm -hmm. each player takes a turn purchasing one of these tiles. Whenever a player buys one of these tiles, they pay their money to the Master Builder. Yes, to me. However, on their turn, instead of buying a tile, they also have an option to just pass and take five thousand mm -hmm. dollars and so this is one of the things that the master builder has to take into consideration when pricing out these tiles because you don't want to price them too high or else nobody will pay you nobody anything will pay me yeah and once all players have taken a turn either purchasing a tile and placing it in the castle or passing to mm -hmm. take the five thousand coins then at the very end it becomes the master builder's turn yep. but the difference is if the master builder decides to purchase a tile they pay all their money to the bank all right, since Naveen priced out all these rooms, it is my turn first to purchase a tile. Mm -hmm. And so I could either purchase one of these, or instead I can purchase either a stairway or a hallway tile for $3,000. Right. The money that I pay for these tiles, I still have to pay to Naveen mm -hmm. as a master builder. But these are always an option as long as there's still some available. Now, before I decide which tile to buy, let's go ahead and take a look at the anatomy of a tile. Room tiles will come in a variety of different sizes, and that is going to be important for some of the end game scoring, as well as different room types. And the type of room is denoted by the symbol at the bottom left hand corner. In this game, there are eight different types of rooms, and this room in particular is a living room. And so the type of room is actually very important because it'll help score you bonus points as well as room completion bonuses, which we'll talk about in a second. Mm -hmm. Now, the number at the top left hand corner of each tile shows you the number of points you're going to score immediately when adding this room to your castle. Mm -hmm. And lastly, most room tiles have a specific bonus that's denoted in the very center of the tile that you're going to score whenever that criteria is met. Some of them are positive points and some of them will lose you points. Mm -hmm. This tile in particular says you're going to score four points for each food room that is specifically connected to this room tile. Mm -hmm. And when we say connected, it has to be connected through one of the entrances. Now, some room tiles, such as this billiards room over here, will affect your points depending on the types of rooms that are just adjacent to this specific room. Mm -hmm. it does not have to be connected via the entrances, unlike the last one. And so in this example, this is a billiards room that says you're going to lose one point for each food room, living room, and sleeping room that is just sharing a wall with this room. Yeah, you don't want to make noise. That's right. Billiards rooms are very noisy, mm -hmm. and you don't want to be noisy next to a sleeping room, right? Right. And other rooms, such as this bottomless pit <laughs> over here, yeah. 
will require you to place it downstairs in your castle, which means you'll need to have built a staircase before placing this. Mm -hmm. In addition, this bonus scoring condition in the middle here will score you one point for each outdoor room that is anywhere in your castle mm -hmm. because it doesn't show any kind of wall symbol in between the points and the room type. So let's just say I bought this tile and I gave Naveen sure. my 10,000. That was good. quite painful. Yes. When you purchase a tile, you must place it immediately into your castle. And so each player starts with a simple uh, three entrance foyer. When placing a tile, the placement rules are fairly simple. You must connect at least one entrance to one entrance that's in your castle. Sure. Yep. Now in the future, you are allowed to block off entrances by using adjacent walls if necessary. Mm -hmm. The only rule is that you have to have at least one open entrance around the exterior of your castle, mm -hmm. which we're still fine here. In addition, you can never overlap a tile, right. but you can rotate it as you see fit. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like yeah, this. You got entrances to the left, right, to the north. Pretty right. Good. There are also other rooms that are called outdoor rooms, and uh, these rooms have a side that is considered to be a fence. And so when placing your room tiles, you can never place a room tile so that it is adjacent to a fence. Right. Because of course, fences must border your estate, right? You just walk into a fence. <laughs> right. Now immediately after a player places their new room tile, they now must score it. So first, you immediately score the points at the top left-hand corner of the tile. So for my vestibule, I'm going to score one point. Then you score the room bonus that's in the middle of the tile as long as it applies. So for my vestibule, if I had any food rooms connected to this room, I would score four points for each room. Right now, I don't have any, so I'm not going to score any points. But on a future turn, if I were to connect, say, this dining room to this mm. room just like that, I would first score the room points, which is going to be one point for the dining room. I would then score its room bonus because it says three points for each living room connected mm -hmm. to it. Then lastly, I would score the four points for the vestibule because now I've attached a food room to this room. That is the perfect synergy right there. Yeah. And that's not necessarily the only other room I would score. Mm -hmm. Before moving on to the next player's turn, you would check your entire castle for any kind of scoring conditions that would trigger when placing that new room. So as you can see, there are a lot of different ways that you can create synergies with the different room types so that you can score a lot of points. So as players start to develop their castle and try to establish what their scoring criteria are, the master builder has to be very cautious and very aware as to how much they're going to price each tile. Lastly, as soon as you've completed a room by connecting all of its entrances to other rooms, you get a room completion reward that's going to be based off of the type of room that you just completed. Now, I just want to note that if you ever block off an entrance by maybe sealing it with an adjacent wall, then that room can never be completed. All entrances must be connected to other entrances of other rooms. Food rooms, when completed, allow you to take an additional turn right away, which means you can either pass for 5k or you can buy an additional tile. And place it immediately, mm -hmm. which also follows the same cascade of scoring points and potentially getting bonuses. Yep. Utility rooms allow you to draw two bonus cards and keep one of them. That's right, and these bonus cards are going to be scored at the end of the game, and they vary wildly. Mm -hmm. So for example, I'm going to score two points for each of my activity rooms, and two points for each of my rooms of size 300. Yeah, so it's kind of a secret thing that you're trying to gun for that nobody knows about. That's right. Living rooms allow you to rescore the completed room completely as if you just placed it. And rescoring living rooms includes the base points as well as any of the room bonuses or adjacent bonuses around your castle. Mm -hmm. Completing a corridor allows you to take a hallway or stairs for free and place it into your castle immediately, mm -hmm. keeping in mind that the lighter shade of hallway must go upstairs and the darker shade goes downstairs. Yep. Now, considering the fact that there are a lot of entrances in corridors, uh, completing one is a little bit it, unlikely. It can be challenging, yeah. Sleeping rooms allow you to take up to two tiles from one of the room stacks and place it on top of the room deck, guaranteeing that they'll be the next ones up when placing tiles in the auction. Mm. Outdoor rooms get you 10,000 coins. Activity rooms get you five points. And finally, for every even number downstairs room you complete, you can take any one of the other seven rewards. Now, once all players have taken a turn, including the master builder, you then put one coin on top of each room tile that was not purchased that round. Mm -hmm. Now, these tiles are just a little bit sweeter. And so on a future turn, anyone who purchases these tiles can use the coin towards the cost of the tile. Yeah, you get a discount. And then these can actually accumulate from round to round. So if a second round happened, you'd put another coin on top of this. Then finally, you end the round by passing the master builder token to the next player. To start the next round, the master builder is going to take a number of cards from the room deck equal to how many spaces are missing in the auction floor. So in this case, two. That's right. And these are the two new room tiles that are going to get added to the auction, mm -hmm. just like that. Yep. Then gameplay continues the way we've already described with the master builder repricing all of the tiles. Mm -hmm. 
Now, when the last card in the room deck is drawn, that is going to signal the final round of the game. And at the end of that round, we're going to go into endgame scoring. At the end of the game, for each room size that has a completely depleted stack, each player is going to score two points for each of those rooms in their castle. Then you score points for each of the king's favorite tiles, and these are scored based off of every player's rank. Some king's favorite tokens, like this one, have to do with room size, and so for this one, all players will count the total square footage of all of their specifically utility rooms in their castle. Mm -hmm. And square footage is listed at the top right hand corner of tiles, as well as on the backs of the different room tiles. Mm -hmm. And whoever has the largest cumulative square footage is going to get 8 points, second place gets 4, in higher player counts there's a third and fourth place for points. And if there's a tie, then tied players add up the total number of points they were supposed to receive, plus the next level of points and divide it evenly between tied players. Other king's favorite tokens, such as this one, have to do with the number of rooms of that specific type, and still others have to do with specific configurations of rooms. And so there are several of these king's favorite tokens that come with the game, so each game is going to be scored a little bit differently. Players will then score points for each of their completed bonus cards, and then for every 10,000 coins you have left over, you'll score one point. And at that point, whoever has the most points wins. And so that is a general overview of how you play the Castles of Madkin Ludwig 2nd Edition. If you have any questions about anything that you saw here today, then please feel free to leave us a comment down below, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Now, this game is currently on Kickstarter. It'll be there for the month of November. So if you are interested in the campaign, there will be that link in the description down below as well. And thank you all so much for watching the video. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.